You see, it's not that the body has life. It receives life. And provided, if you like, the current is switched on, you're alive. If I switch it off, the body lays there dead, except for certain ongoing battery functions supplied by life from the batteries in the body, energy stores gradually used up in sleeping and the general maintenance that goes on at night. But to be alive, you have to be awake. In other words, switched on again. The, the, now, let's get off the notion of power for a moment. The thoughts are coming in. It's not just blank or maintenance stuff going on. That sort of low tick over of the body and mind. It's now life. The stream of life that says, oh yes, I'm Marshall, I live here in Hamilton, New Zealand, and etc. I've got this, oh, it's Saturday, oh, right, and, oh, it's Sunday today, mm -hmm. oh, that means so and so. And you know, all the um, information from the mainframe mind of God is switched on namely that program that's relevant to me in the continuation of what I take to be waking life. And it may have switched from a, a preoccupation with a dream experience, a whole cluster of thoughts from God that I've drawn in my... Um, uh, non, what we call waking conscience, consciousness. And I've been running this dream, uh, whatever it is. And uh, my awaking consciousness may be so switched off that I can't even transfer the memory of this dream across. So, in a sense, God is working on us at night and we have very little record of it. Or we've got a bit, you know, we had a nightmare or a super dream or something. Thoughts being transferred <coughs> are at our super high frequencies of what we at least conceptualize as minute, to say the least, particles, frequency of bombardment. They are of unimaginably high energy. Well, in fact, imaginably high energy. Imagination, thought, is that high energy I can't even say minute particle, I mean demi, mini, 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 minute. I mean, uh, just, uh, the mind can't grasp how small we're talking about. And that's the stream of thought that ever is our God is God of the living, he's the living God. He's this mass of, so the evidence of him is this mass of thought, of which we only tap into that relevant to our individual coding your uniqueness and mine as regards values. It's our values 
that's drawing the particular selection of thoughts that we're occupied in. And we're also receiving whole streams of thoughts that we're not tuned into, so it's just white noise. Except sometimes it isn't, and we pick up a thread of what someone else is thinking of God's mind. And you can read someone's mind in that sense, perhaps. You know what they're thinking. Or you've got a hunch, an intuition, or, or something like that, you see. Do you see yourself is not actually here, so to speak, located in this thought of the planet Earth and, and so on? Yourself is in God's mind. He holds a um, particular value framework, which is you, your current values. And uh, they're not ideal for harmony in heaven if you're given complete freedom. So those values are being uh, reselected, adjusted. And the adjustment process is happening here for you and me on earth at present while we're alive, as we call it, namely here. What we call here, namely the earth and you know, it's suddenly the, I don't know, 20 whatever it is, um, of November 2023 in New Zealand, Hamilton, Marshall, where he lives and so on. I mean, that's the projection. It's projected onto the back rock of what you might want to think of as the string texture of space. Our sun and this planet and all its detail, or what we call matter, is being projected on this material of space. whatever dimensions it has, some of which we are very familiar with. This film represents the recoding process going on, what we call daily living. It's the, um, the screen, if you like, of what's going on that the program's doing at lightning speed. And it's the program specific to the app that you're running at the minute on, on your computer, so to speak. Um, and it's coming up on the screen. And in consequence of this happening, this movie we're experiencing, you adjust your values. You learn, quite simply. By learning, we mean your values are recoded. And the thoughts that you therefore draw on from God's mind, remember your values are in God's mind, it's a particular selection. The thoughts you now draw are appropriate to that selection of values that's now being made. And so your film 
your life on earth unfolds accordingly. of devotion to God and as the doer means that you're purposed on gaining a harmony. You've reached a stage of values that seek the perfection of these values, namely the harmonization of these values to that of heaven. You are become an active participant in your own development. You're not just purpose to do what your values draw, but also purpose that your values be changed, that you draw that which is a harmony with heaven. Wow, you're well on the way. Uh, you're a, you know, you're God's disciple, you're, 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 you're working with him, not against him. Your values have reached a certain level, or are at a certain level, of cooperation in their own bringing about a completeness, harmony with God. Mm, that's quite wonderful. Bless you. Me too. <laughs> mm, thank you, Dad. Goodness, thank you, Dad. How utterly wonderful. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It's almost absurdly comical, but what we call black holes are intense localities of mind. And our notion of the ultimate God Is something far, far greater than that. That can hold these thought particles. It's, it's, it's scarcely right to call particles. I mean, they are so small. I mean, they make electrons look like universes by comparison. can hold these almost non-existent particles by tremendous attraction as equally beyond our comprehension. That hold such high energy frequency in there that counteract that escape the gravity and uh, penetrate all of space with um, absurd philosophies that make the speed of light look like um, a snail compared to supersonic flight. Uh, I mean the extremes are so vast that comparison is, means nothing. This is what your brain is sensitive to. That's the wonder of this creation. That you 
receive thoughts all the time. Y you know, you are a, a terminal that can detect <laughs> by a, an ultra magnificent form of Wi Fi <laughs> what God's thoughts are. And in particular, tune into the channel of the program that's relevant to you as regards those thoughts and not all the rest that's flooding what we call empty space. <laughs> it makes Piccadilly Circus look like um, Desert Island. by comparison, busyness. Do you mean, Marshall, that these black holes are super beings and that God is the greatest of black holes? And of course, why I said it was ludicrous, this naming of black holes, because we're, we're suggesting a a complete absence of light and life to something that's the very, even the word epitome doesn't, you know, it under, understates, doesn't it? It's really the very epitome of life and light and understanding and so forth. It's the very being of God. But it's not. God is the unmanifest. You could say, well, black holes are pretty unmanifest, you can't see them. But they are there. Yeah. We're thinking in terms of space and matter still there. God is not that. Space and matter is itself. Simply a thought of God. I can't grasp, imagine, scarcely even symbolize the nature of if you like, God's true existence. Because even existence is a consequence of him, not a cause. You see, in that sense, he is the prime cause. I'm not sure as it isn't even indecent to be analyzing God. It's as if it's forbidden territory, but not quite, because we're children of God. And we long to know what we as persons are. What he is, we are. And we want to know that. I can see why the ancients thought that in some sense, I think they thought, some of them at least, that the dead person was one of those stars in heaven. That there were countless stars because there had been countless people and they're now in heaven. It's an attractive idea, and it may be one of the more useful ones, too. I don't mean it's necessarily objectively true in some sense, but 
that in the sense of useful understanding mm, could be good. In which case black holes are magnificent persons, stars are persons, planets are persons. You know, a planet could well be just an old star that's used up its energy, couldn't it? Stars shine brilliantly. If there should suddenly arise within the skies sunbeams of undreamed of, of a thousand suns or stars or something, then might that holy one's majesty and might be dreamed of. Bhagavad Gita. We liken God to the brilliance of the stars and perhaps not just liken it, but the stars stream high energy particles and God is, as regards our sensitivity in this universe dimension, this stream of ideas that come to us, light, wisdom, understanding, the light that we may see. I return to as God the unmanifest. God the manifest is in the Son, the Holy Spirit, the thoughts that we receive. But the giver of these thoughts, and he is also of the same as we, his children, are persons. You have no idea the nature of personhood, yours and God's. All we see is the consequence how you behave and the thoughts we receive. But we know in our heart we want to be of you, Father. And we wouldn't want that if we weren't of you already. For we are bedrock, that which values you. So that's who we are. Something that commends itself to your values is in us, our values. We are your children. And all we know is we want to love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And we do. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you, Holy One from whom all blessings flow. We stand in awe of you. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad.